guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, I'm going to go through the setup process for this Xfinity X1 box and I'll go through this step by step. But before we begin, I wanted to let you know that I do plan on making future videos about the Xfinity X1 TV box and about this remote. So check back for those videos and when I do make them, I'll link them at the end of this video. I also have videos on the Xfinity Flex box and I'll link those videos in a playlist at the end of this video. And if you're interested in half time, please check that playlist out. Okay, so I ordered this stuff online and then I went into a local Xfinity store to pick it up and these three items came bundled together. So the Xfinity X1 box, the power cable, and the remote, and I've already taken off that packaging. And then they also gave me this here and inside of here is some coax cable, an HDMI cable, and then a getting started guide. And we'll take a closer look at those shortly. Okay, so before we begin, here is the getting started guide and make sure that you read through all of this information and make sure that you're wearing the proper safety equipment and take all safety precautions. Okay, so here is the Xfinity X1 box and I'm going to turn this around here. So here's what the back looks like and we have the cable in and the cable out um, and this is for coax cable. And then we have an ethernet right here. And then we have the left and right audio. And we have the standard definition video out and a digital audio out. And then we have an HDMI in and out to TV. And then we have USB here. And then this is where the power cable goes. There's also a power button right here. Okay, so here are the different cables and cords. This is the coax cable right here. And then right here is the HDMI cable and it does have these plastic pieces on the end and we're going to need to take those off before we use this. They're just there to protect the ends of the HDMI cable. Okay, and then here is the power cable and the power cable has two cords. So this cord here is already attached to this rectangle and then this cord you need to attach to the rectangle if it's not already. Okay, and just in case this power cord was not attached on yours, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we take a look at the end of the power cord, one of the sides is rounded and one of the sides is square. And if you look at the side of the rectangle where the power cord is going to attach, you'll notice that one of the sides is rounded and one of the sides is square. So just make sure that you plug the power cord in properly. And when you plug this power cord into the rectangle, make sure that it gets plugged in correctly and make sure that it gets plugged in all the way. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is to take the coax cable and push it onto the port where it says cable in. And then once you push it on there a little bit, you can start turning this clockwise and it will start to tighten down. And then you'll just keep turning this clockwise until you get it finger tight. And I'm still doing that now. And there we go. And the next thing that you do is take the other side of that coax cable and tighten it down onto the cable wall outlet that I just did here. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is to plug the HDMI cable into the X1 TV box. But before we do that, we need to remove these plastic ends on the HDMI cable and there's two of them. So I'm just going to set those to the side for now. And then just make sure to throw these away so no child or animal gets a hold of them. Okay, so now we're going to take one side of the HDMI cable and install it into the X1 TV box. And if you take a look at the end of the HDMI cable, it can only install one direction, so make sure that you install it correctly. And it's going to install right here where it says HDMI out to TV. And when you install the HDMI cable into the X1 TV box, make sure that you install it correctly and that it installs all the way into place. And then you're going to take the other end of the HDMI cable and install it into one of the available HDMI ports on your TV. Just remember which one. Okay, so before we plug the power cable in, I want to set up the remote so it's ready. And I've taken the plastic packaging off of the remote and off of the batteries. So here is the remote, here is the getting started guide, and then here are the two AA batteries. 
Okay, so make sure to read through the getting started guide before you do use the remote. And it looks like on some of the remotes, there is a plastic pull tab back here that you need to remove to allow the batteries to make contact with the remote. With the remote that I got, they gave the batteries separate, so I do need to install those. And if you need to install the batteries, just make sure that you install them correctly. Okay, so here's the back of the remote, and this is the battery cover, and there's a line right here. And if you gently push down on that line and then move the battery cover down, you can take the battery cover off like so. And make sure that you install the batteries the correct direction, and then to reinstall the battery cover, just line it up like this, and then gently press it up until it snaps back into place, like so. And I do plan to make a future video about all of the specifics of this remote, so make sure to check back for that video. And when I do make that video, I'll link it at the end of this one. Okay, so next we're going to plug this side of the power cable into this red circle here. And everything is color-coded on the back of the Xfinity X1 TV box. And those colors may change over time, so just be aware of that. And when you do plug this in, just make sure that it plugs in correctly and all the way. And then plug the other end of the power cable into an electrical outlet, which I just did. Okay, so after I plugged the Xfinity X1 TV box into the wall, I did not have to press the power button, and this blue light right here just turned on. Alright guys, so after I plugged the power cable into the electrical outlet, the Xfinity X1 TV box turned on like I said, and I did not have to press the power button. And I needed to change the TV to input number one because that's the input that I plugged the HDMI cable into. So once I did that, it went to a welcome screen for, I don't know how long, probably about five minutes or so. And then after that, it went to this screen here. And on this screen, it says select your language and it gives us three different options. So you can use the arrows on the remote to change to whatever option you want. And then when you get to the option that you want, you'll press the circle button in the middle of the arrows. And this is the next screen here. It's asking, do you want to keep using voice guidance? And you can use the arrows to select yes or no. And then when you get to the option that you want, you press the circle button in the middle of the arrows. Okay, so after that, it went through some loading screens and then it ended up on this screen here where it's saying, please verify your phone number, enter the last four digits of any phone number listed on your account. And you can use the remote to enter the last four digits of your phone number. You can press the up and down arrow to select the number that you want, and then the right arrow to move to the next number. Or you can use the numbers on the keypad, and then you'll select continue to move on to the next screen. And if this doesn't work for you, it does give you another option to verify another way. All right, guys, so after that, it went through some loading screens, and then it ended up on this screen here where it says name your device, create a custom name, or use one of our suggested names to easily identify this device. And then you can press the arrows on the remote to select one of the suggested names or to create a custom name. And when you get to the one that you want, you'll press the circle button in the middle of the arrows to select that. And this screen here says device successfully named and you can use the circle button in the middle of the arrows to select OK. Alright guys, so the next screen talked about resolution optimized for HD video and I did not get video of that screen. But then it gave you an option to select yes or no and then after that screen is this screen here. And this screen says, do you want to use your remote to control your TV power and volume? And you can select yes or not now. Okay, so I used the remote to select yes. And then it went to this screen where it says, is this TV made by Sharp? And I can select yes or no with the remote by pressing the arrow button to go to no. Or by selecting yes with the circle button in the middle of the arrows. And this screen says ready to pair. After this, you'll be able to control your Sharp TV power and volume using your remote. And I can select OK by pressing the circle button in the middle of the arrows. 
And then this is the next screen where it says confirm pairing was successful. Try using your remote to adjust the volume on your TV. So I'm doing that now. I'm pressing the volume up button and down button and nothing is working. So I'm going to use the arrow button to say it doesn't work and then the circle button to select it doesn't work. So when you're testing the volume buttons on the remote, make sure that you're pointing the remote at the IR receiver on the TV. I actually think that this remote was working. I was just not pointing it at the IR receiver on the TV. But I'm still going to leave the next part of the video in in case your remote's not working. And then on this screen here, it says your remote is paired for voice control. Would you like to control your Sharp TV using your remote? And I can select yes, choose another device or skip. And I can select yes by pressing the circle button in the middle of the arrows on the remote. Okay, so this is the next screen for me and it says follow these steps to control your Sharp TV. And there are three different steps. And on the third step, there is a five digit code. And this five digit code may be different for you. And after I followed these steps, I tested out the volume button on the remote and we can see that it's working now. All right guys, so this is the next screen and it says confirm pairing was successful. And we have the option to select it works or it doesn't work. In this case, we know that it does work. So I'm going to select it works by pressing the circle button in the middle of the arrows. All right guys, so this is the next screen where it says would you also like to control your audio receiver using your new remote and you can select yes or skip. And then I'm going to select skip by pressing the right arrow button to go over to skip and then pressing the circle button in the middle of the arrows to select skip. Okay, so after that step, the X1 TV box started working. So that was the last step. And I hope this video was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And like I said earlier, I do plan to make future videos about the X1 TV box and the Xfinity voice remote. So make sure to check back for those videos. And when I do make those videos, I'll link them at the end of this one. I'll also link my Xfinity Flex playlist at the end of this video. And if you're interested and have time, please check that playlist out. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have the time, check out these other great videos.